welcome to St. John's. And welcome to you if you're watching um, at home as well. Um, great to have you with us too. Um, it, my name is Eddie, uh, the vicar here at uh, St. John's. It's great to have you uh, with us, especially if you're new and have not been before. Um, welcome. Uh, today is an all-age service where we stay together for the service. So the, uh, there is uh, a, a rather different feel to the service because we're staying together. Um, we also have communion, and we'll explain a little bit more about that um, later. But hopefully you got one of these little slips on the way in and a pen. Uh, if you didn't get one, I'm sure Joanna is at the back there. She is. Um, do stick your hand up and grab one uh, of these. These are for you to draw a picture um, of a person. It could be yourself. It could be somebody else. Um, you can be as simple as a stick man if you want, or you can be as complicated as you like. But we'd love you to draw um, a person on this little piece of paper, and later... Um, uh, Rosie will explain what we're going to do with those in the service. So please do that at any point during the service. So as we begin, let me read uh, from God's word from 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11:26 says, "The Lord meant that when you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you remember." about his death until he comes again. And so today we are thinking about remembering as we come around the table, remembering. I don't know how good you are at remembering, um, but we're going to remember. And it's through remembering all that the Lord has done that we are revived in him. Let's pray. God our Father, thank you for this new day, a day that you have made we pray, Father, as we gather together, we will remember all that the Lord Jesus has done for us and that we may be revived through it. In his name we pray. Amen. We're going to hand over to the band to lead us in our opening song. So let's stand, shall we?
Father God, we thank you that you have created us. We've created us for, you, for yourself, for your glory. And thank you that you've revealed that to us in Jesus and all that you've done through him. May you focus our hearts and lives on him now. In his name we pray. Amen. Would you like to take a seat for a moment? We're going to um, say our confession together. We're going to say sorry to God. And uh, the words are going to appear on the screen. So uh, hopefully they'll come up. So let's just take a moment as we come before an almighty God who is our creator. Do we have those words? Let's say together our confession. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father God, we thank you that, that it is you that renews us, restores us. Thank you that you've given us your salvation. You've rescued us through the Lord Jesus. And Father, we pray, as we know that we've been forgiven in him, that we may go out uh, from this place to live for you in the newness of life that you've given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Rosie. This is, this is not the talk. This is just to get us warmed up, really, into the getting good memories, okay? Now then, we've got some pictures here of things that remind us of things. So if you've been watching the news this week, you may have spotted this. Doesn't that look tasty? Does anyone know what this picture is of? Mmm. Ah, tell us. It is indeed. It is indeed the platinum winning pudding to remind us of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Doesn't that look edible? <laughs> Don't you think? Fantastic. We are going a little bit further back for our next reminder. Now then. <laughs> We've got an excellent memory back here, excellent memory. Before Nikki tells us, is there someone over there who knows what this tasty looking thing is? It, there is someone over there, what is it? What is it? It is coronation, coronation chicken, it is indeed. That's what you were going to say, isn't it, Nick? I thought it was, excellent. Right, I was born when it was the coronation, but now we're going even further back into ancient history for the next one. Now, what is that recipe? Ah, go on, Phoebe. Victoria Sponge, fantastic. You are older than you look, Phoebe. Fantastic, excellent. Very, very good. And finally, way, way back in history, but I bet a lot of the young people will know this one. Go on then. Ah, oh, hot cross bun, and what does it remind us of? It certainly does, the cross indeed. Um, and by the way, don't forget, and if you come in late and you don't know, you've got a piece of paper, please remember to be drawing a person on it. I'll tell you later what you need to do with it. Thank you, Rosie. Isn't it interesting how um, we use food 
and meals to remember things. And of course, that does really, uh, shouldn't surprise us that God has given us a meal to remember what um, he's done for us. So uh, we're going to sing again. So I'm going to invite the band up. And so please, um, let's stand a- again, worship God in, the, in Great Are You, Lord. Father, we just pour out our praise, 
our hearts to you for what you have done. And may you revive us through it. Amen. Amen. Please um, take a seat. We're going to have our Bible um, readings now. And uh, Nathan and Joyce are going to come up to read for us. Today's reading will be from Psalms chapter 22, verse 27. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. Verse 28. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. Verse 29. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive. Verse 30. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. Verse 31. They will proclaim his, his righteousness, the claim to a people yet unborn. He has done it. Morning, church. Morning. My name is Joyce. I'm born again. I love the Lord as my savior. Our second reading will come from the book of Luke, chapter number one, from verse 50 to 55. Can you hold here for me? Sorry, hold. Uh, and I read, he has performed mighty deeds with his arms. He has scattered those who are proud in their, most, in their innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but he has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but he has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servants Israel, remembering to, the, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. That's the word of God. God bless his word. Thank you so much for brilliant reading. Thank you so much. We live in the middle of history. We tell stories about what happened in the past. We don't know what will happen next, but we hope for things in the future. Actually, I haven't got that quite right at all. I think, actually, that history is God's story. It's the story of God and the universe he made and all of us that he made. So the stories that, he, that we tell the stories of what happened in the past are remembering the great things that God has done. There are troubles in the story, but God is stronger than all of them. And all the time, all the time, God is building his huge family. Let's have a look at how God's family keeps on growing. Now, I'm going to ask for your help and I'm going to ask you to stand up, but please don't feel, if standing is not for you, please don't feel you have to. But if you can, I think we're going to show how God has grown his family for such a long time that we need to go back. And I think someone is holding cards that say, Abraham and Sarah. Are there some? Oh, yes, there are. Look over there and you will see people holding up the cards that say Abraham and Sarah and standing very safely so we can see them. Excellent. Can you stay there? Because you are just the first. You're the first people that God promised there would be a huge family. God's promise was that there would be so many people, there would be as many as there are stars in the sky. 
And so that family grew. Abraham and Sarah had a son and then grandsons and then, then has anyone got Joseph? Ha ha ha. There is Joseph. By the time we get to Joseph, we're, we've got a, quite a big family just all together. He's got 11 brothers. That family is getting bigger. Joseph saved Egypt and his own family from starving and they carried on living in Egypt. Now there's, uh, I think we need some more people here. So can the first, at least four benches stand up as well, if you feel able to, okay? Because there were quite a few people, excellent. There were quite a few people by the time we get to Joseph. And they stayed in Egypt for a while. But after a while, when there were so many of them, and there was a new pharaoh, the new pharaoh started to get worried about how many of this family there were. This wasn't a great bloke, this new pharaoh. Now, have we got a Moses anywhere? Oh, yes, we have. Look, over there is Moses. Because by this time, there were huge numbers of people, and they were slaves in Egypt because Pharaoh turns against them. I said there were troubles in history, but God is stronger than all of them. God helps Moses and rescues all the people. I think everybody else in that section, if you feel able, stand up because you're all rescued. Excellent. If you feel able, do stand up, but it's not going to stop there. It doesn't stop. Have we got anyone holding a David sign? Who, oh, yes. Could you possibly, would you feel safe standing on the bench holding that up? Excellent. Because David is the one who wrote the psalm that we have just read out. He said, all the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. God's family is going to include people from every country in the world. And you need to know your compass points here. It, countries from the north, south, east and west. Does anyone know which direction north is? Uh. <laughs> It is. Excellent. So can we have some people from the north standing up, please? Excellent. It's getting easier now because you should be able to work out where south is. Can we have some more people from the south standing up? I think they nearly all are. Fantastic. Right. Anyone know which direction east is? I do. I'm here. But can I have some more people? Yeah, excellent. Let's have some people from the front standing up. Excellent. And you should be able to work out those people at the back. You're not left out. You're in the West. Let's have the West standing up as well. Fantastic. Excellent. Thank you if you've been able to join in. And if you're at home, I know we won't be able to see you, but you are North, South, East and West. So do feel free to stand up at home for a few minutes because... David knew, God told him, that all nations would be called, all nations would be told the good news. It was amazing. Thank you. Do sit down for a minute. Don't forget to finish your picture because in the north, south, east and west of the church, we have got banners. And once your pic... Ah, excellent. Eddie is holding up an example of the banner. And on there, there are stickers. So you should be able, while I'm talking, to go and stick your picture onto a banner. There's one there, 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 and there. So we can have pictures on all of them stuck on the stickers. Fantastic. And when we've done that, we're going to bring up the banners so you can all see just how many people there are in the north and south and east and west. While you're doing that, 
let me just say a few things about Psalm 22 that was so beautifully read, the last part. But actually, there are two parts to Psalm 22. It's an incredible psalm, and it's in two sections. The bit we didn't hear is often quoted around Easter because David was talking probably at a time when he felt pretty miserable and sad, but he also knew ahead of time, he predicted what was going to happen to Jesus and what Jesus was going to do for us. So in Psalm 22, he gives loads of details that just looked like he knew what was going to happen at Easter. It looked like God told him that the Savior was going to come and save us. It even predicts one line, they pierce my hands and my feet. It's an amazing prediction of what is going to happen when Jesus died for us on Good Friday. Just as we will remember exactly what Jesus did with the bread and the wine later in the service. And the second section tells us that after Jesus saved us, the good news started to spread to other countries. And Jesus said to his followers, it's going to go to the ends of the earth. You're going to start with the countries just around about, but then you're going to travel miles and miles and miles, and we're still doing it. We're still seeing that spread. That good news is being told from generation to the next generation. And I hope it revives our confidence that the good news is going to the ends of the earth. There's one more important thing to say about remembering, and that is that perhaps even more than we try our best and God helps us to remember the amazing things he's done, God is always remembering us. God's whole story is about God remembering us. God remembered his promise to Abraham that his family would grow. God did not forget his people when they were slaves in Egypt. And Junior Church have been doing a lot about that story and how God did not forget his people. And when Mary was told about the birth of Jesus, she sings for joy. He has helped, he has helped his servant remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Both David's song and Mary's song are sure that God remembers everyone, rich and poor, young and old, people from every nation, and people from future generations who aren't even born yet. I think it's amazing, looking around all the different ages we are, that we also have amongst us children who will themselves become parents and tell their children the good news. Isn't that astonishing to think of the future and how this good news won't stop with us. It will just keep going. So, have we got some posters from the north, south, east and west that we're going to bring up and we're going to clip to our communion table here so if you're anywhere near a banner and you could help us bring it up, we're going to put them around the table. Anyone able to help? Oh, yes, here comes one. Oh, fantastic. Thank you very much, Phoebe. Can you hold one end while I start clipping it with these clips? This is amazing. And let's clip the other end so it doesn't fall down. Fantastic. Excellent. Oh, yes. Oh, look at this. Excellent. If you could hold one end, that would be really good. Yeah, that'd be great. Have a couple of clips, Joanna. These are beautiful. How's it looking? Oh, yes. People from north, south, east, and west, well done to you all for your lovely artwork. 
as we look at your beautiful work and look at all those people from every nation, I'm going to read just a little bit of Psalm 22 again. And it ends with what we're going to keep declaring to people, this good news. God has done it. It ends Psalm 22 with the words, he has done it. So if I read it again, would you join in and really go for it with he has done it? Because that's what we're saying about our amazing God. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive, posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. Thank you. Thank you, Rosie. Wasn't that brilliant? Um, and we're going to respond now to what we've heard in prayer. We're going to have a time of prayer. And we're going to pray for, for the nations, as the, the reading said in Psalm 22, verse 37. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. So we're going to pray um, for the nations. And the way that we're going to do this is um, using these two blow up globes. I can, fit, I can feel the fear <laughs> in you. Uh, um, so what we're going to do is um, I'm going to throw them out to you, having done a careful risk assessment and told you to warn, be careful, and, uh, where, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll play a sort of church beach ball kind of throw around tap gently around Liam uh, and, uh, and then I'll say stop and then I want you to, to choose a country we'll choose uh, a country and we will pray for them yeah, we'll pray for the nations that they too will hear and be able to call upon the Lord, so we're going to do this, okay are you ready oh, sounds like there <laughs> there we go, there we go there we go, there we go there we go. Oh, <laughs> where are we going? Ready and stop. There we go. Right. What have we got? Choose a country. Sorry, what was that? Algeria. Ukraine. Ukraine. Okay, let's pray for Algeria and Ukraine. Father God, we pray. For Algeria and Ukraine, we pray that they would remember the good news of Jesus and turn to the Lord. In his name, amen. Are you ready for it again? Yes? Okay, let's go. Away they go. You can throw it about. Oh, there we go. And three, two. You've got to keep, it's not like, it's like pass a parcel. You can't hold on to it. <laughs> Howard. <laughs> Stop. What have we got over here? We've got somebody over here. What country are we going for, Joyce? Kenya. Kenya? Uh, <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> what about over here? America. Going for America. Any specific a part of America? <laughs> no, just America. Let's pray for America, shall we? Father God, we pray for the United States of America and for Kenya. We pray that they will remember the good news of Jesus and turn to the Lord. In his name, amen. Shall we do one more? I think we can risk one more, shall we? Yeah? Okay? Try, try and get it, it's like volleyball, you have to get it go up, you know, kind of upwards. Oh! <laughs> Be nice to people. I'll close my eyes. Three, two, one, and stop. There we go. Stop. What have we got? Are you going to choose a country? Australia. Australia. England. Pray for England. Thank you. Let's pray. 
Father God, we pray for England and Australia. We pray that they will remember the good news of Jesus and turn to the Lord. In his name we pray. Amen. Father God, may all the ends of the earth remember the Lord Jesus and turn to him and be saved. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Uh, let's uh, say together the Lord's Prayer, shall we, which hopefully will appear on the screen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So um, perhaps uh, so, uh, somebody who uh, can, can pick up the, uh, the balls and the globes and put them somewhere safe, um, we will then turn to the, the Lord's table. The invitation to receive uh, bread and wine is open to all those who know and love the Lord Jesus. You're very welcome to come forward and receive. Um, perhaps you're here in, and uh, you're not sure what it means to know and love the Lord Jesus. We'd love to tell you more about that if that's you. Um, but you may just want to come forward and leave your hands by your side and we'd be very happy to pray for you. Um, at St. John's, if you have children and with children, um, it's our policy that it's at parents' um, discretion whether, the, uh, whether your child receives the bread and the wine. If you'd like to talk to me about that afterwards, I'm very, very happy to talk to you about that as well. Um, if you require the non-alcoholic wine, it's on the band side um, of the church. What are we remembering? What are we remembering we're remembering the death of the Lord Jesus. And we remember that on the night um, before he was betrayed, he said these words. They should appear on the screen. Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. So we move on uh, to a question I'm going to ask you, which you might like to respond. And so, as when each generation it asks, What does this meal mean to you? We say, it is the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, whose body was broken for us, whose blood was poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for your love and your faithfulness. We come to your table as your children, not trusting in ourselves, but in our Lord Jesus who rescued us on the cross. We thank you for this bread and wine as reminders of Jesus' death, whose body was broken and whose blood was poured out for us. We thank you that Jesus, whom you raised from the dead, is alive forever. Amen. Look. Here is bread. We will remember Jesus. Look, here is a cup of wine. We will remember Jesus. As his friends did long ago, 
watch as bread is broken, we will remember Jesus. And watch as wine is poured, we will remember Jesus. Like then, bread will be eaten and wine drunk. We will remember Jesus. Jesus gave us a meal so we would not forget his body broken and blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. We will remember Jesus. So I invite you to draw near as directed by the stewards at Draw near and remember, and as we remember, let us be revived by what the Lord Jesus has done for us through his death and resurrection. Amen. Remember that Jesus died.
invite you to join with me in the responses. We've eaten bread to remember Christ. May his presence revive our lives. We have drunk wine to remember Christ. May his peace revive our lives. Let us spread the good news through all the nations. May the truth of his word revive our lives. Jesus is with us to the end of the age. May his spirit revive our lives. Father, we thank you for the good news of the gospel that we have remembered in sharing bread and wine. We pray that we would declare it to people, people yet unborn. We pray, Father, that we will remember that Jesus has done it. He's died and rose again. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and praise him in uh, remembering him.
Indeed, great things he has done. Great things. Father, thank you uh, that Jesus is the way to you. It is through your son, Jesus, that we come to know you. So we thank you and praise you. And may that, that spirit of re revival in our hearts go with us into the rest of the week, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you just take a, a seat for a moment? Um, I have a couple of notices to tell you um, because we need to be reminded. We need to remember things. Don't we? So I, have to, I need to tell you a, th a few things. Please sign up for the weekend away. It would be great to get uh, people signed up as soon as possible. And uh, I think we still would like to know about people who would like to go just for the day on the Saturday. If that's you, do, do talk to me or talk to Anne down here at the front. Um, we would like to hear from you if you would be interested in just going for the Saturday. Um, there's a welcome tea coming up. If perhaps you're feeling you're new to St. John's, perhaps the last three, four, six months, whatever, like to come along and find out more about the church. It's on June the 12th. Look out for that. Um, women's breakfast on Saturday the 28th. Is, are we still taking bookings for that? Yes, I think we are. Um, so do look out for that on... If you're a woman and would like breakfast, uh, then Saturday 28th. And this afternoon, um, we have service of remembrance this afternoon at 3 o'clock, just for a short period to remember loved ones who have died over, uh, well, uh, maybe they've died a while ago, but to just take time to um, remember them before the Lord. So that's at 3 o'clock today. You might like to, to join us for that. Um, I also have some bands of marriage to read. Um, maybe you're new or you're listening and wondering what on earth bands of marriage are. Um, ask me afterwards, because <laughs> it'd probably take a while to explain. Um, but it's something we do here in order to, a legal requirement in order to help people get married. And so um, I'm going to publish some bands of marriage. If we can get the right page, here we go. So I published the bands of marriage between Sam Stoddart van der Maiden and Emma Elizabeth Grace Dalton of the parish of All Saints, Baton. Um, many of you will know the Dalton family. This is Emma Dalton, who's getting married uh, in June, who's part of our fellowship for many years. Um, they wish to be married here in St. John's by virtue of her connection to the parish. And this is for the first time of asking. I also publish the bands of marriage between Murray Peter Tabot and Olivia Grace Harris, who are of this parish, St. John's. Who, and this is for the first time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. Shall we pray for them and pray for ourselves as we... Um, finish our service. Father God, we so thank you for marriage. We thank you for Sam and Emma and for Murray and Olivia. We pray that you will help them in all the preparation for their marriage. We pray most of all that you will reveal more of your love for them in the person of Jesus Christ that we've been hearing about this morning. And we pray for ourselves as well, as we go from this place. We pray that you would revive our hearts by remembering the good news of Jesus, that he came into the world to save sinners. And we pray that we will respond um, in our lives, uh, living for Jesus, living out all that he's called us to do. So Father, help us, we pray, as we go into this week, to keep remembering and be revived in it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming and we'll see you next time.